Microsoft for 17 years, has presented at numerous events and conventions over the years, and published hundreds of articles in the media, as well as four books and a video course. His speech today is titled, The Customer Shoes. Let's give a warm round of applause for Mr. Urez Janeri. Yeah. Hi folks, can anybody hear me well? Yes. Okay, so my name is Erez Maneri, and uh, as um, you've heard, I have uh, working for the customer service and support for many, many years, in fact, most of my career. Uh, the first question, I guess, I want to ask today is, do we actually need uh, customer service? And the answer is a resounding yes, because uh, studies and research has shown many, many times that good service and support and help of customers uh, addressing their issues and taking care of them has led consistently to improved sales, customer loyalty, brand loyalty, customers coming back, and uh, they're proud, they're spreading the word, they help businesses grow. The second question I want to ask is, why do we need this, or how do we need this? And uh, because a lot of companies who do uh, surveys, they say, what, we, we have great customer service, uh, numbers are, uh, surveys show 95% satisfaction ratio, 98% satisfaction ratio, which seems all great. But does a company that has 95% or 98% positive experiences need a better service? Mm -hmm. I think yes, because 95% mean, means there are 5% more that are actually not very happy for this or that reason. So improving that kind of experience for the users and for the customers is, is, could be a, a really big differentiator. Now let's, let's ask ourselves, what is actually good customer service? Some of us think, kind of by nature, that a good service is resolving problems, solving them. Uh, that is not untrue, but if you think about it, a good customer service is actually a lot more. It's about connecting with the customer. It's creating connection. And this is why this presentation is titled The Customer's Shoes. Because both for me and others who work in this field, being able to put yourself in the customer's shoes to create a really, really good bond and connection with them, connection with them can lead to a lot of satisfaction, even in cases where you can't actually solve the problem. A lot of times, a customer calls in for help not so much because he wants to solve a problem, but because he, he wants to feel, or she wants to feel, value. They want to feel like the, the company cares for them and wants to be a part of their lives, and that's just uh, um, return some amount of money or fix some kind of damaged product. Um, so basically, if, you, if you're able to make that kind of connection, make people feel good, that is a very good key to having a good positive experience, again, even in cases where we can't actually resolve whatever the problem is. Sometimes you know, the product is damaged, sometimes the service has just failed, sometimes the company just cannot deliver whatever it is the customer needs. But if they feel good about their experience, that can sometimes be even better than a good product. Um, a lot of us who work in this kind of field run, ac run across uh, what we call uh, the unpleasant user. Sometimes you could use harsher words to describe that kind of situation. Um, and that could make us feel, uh, as people who do that kind of service, not so great. I mean, if the customer is a nag or is very angry, very frustrated, sometimes customers even cuss people who work with them, that's certainly not a great experience. But even though that seems to be bad and unpleasant, those are actually sometimes the best opportunities to kind of turn things around and turn a customer who's not happy into a customer that not only will be happy, but could uh, even become a very strong customer advocate or company advocate for the provider. I've personally worked with a lot of customers in that kind of situation where they were initially frustrated, angry, and that turned over over a period of hours or sometimes days into customers that have become the best advocates for me and my company. Um, another thing we have to consider about this is uh, realistic goals or how to deal with them. Because customer, companies who have customer service oftentimes set certain um, goals or deadlines. For example, let's say I uh, work uh, customer cases, I might be required to solve an X amount per day as part of my quota. Or I may be uh, required to spend no more than an X amount of time with those specific customers. That could put us, uh, put us under some kind of stress and strain to kind of maybe cut corners. But the challenge is to really deal with that and make things work right. I personally always advocate to try not to think too much in terms of those SLAs, if you might have heard that term, or goals or deadlines, and try to think of the best outcome, even if that means sometimes violating the rules. I can tell you from my own experience, I've worked under these kinds of, uh, of guidelines or, um, or frameworks, and I've usually just kind of ignored them and let myself do the right thing. Sometimes that meant my numbers were not right. I had uh, uh, not been able to solve a case in the amount of time allotted, 
but that always paid off in the long run because again, those customers are always happy at the end. They come back, they sing our praise or sometimes my own praise, and that always works for the best. Um, ultimately, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, communications and creating good contact with the customer is really the key to that. So one key to that is making everything personal. There's a lot of tendency with people who provide support and service to try to not make it so personal. They try to kind of hide behind the group. Like they use a lot of words like, we, we want to help you, we are here to help, uh, my team and I will do this. And there's nothing really, really wrong with that because ultimately we are all part of teams and we want to uh, focus on the company, but people tend to connect to other people. So making things personal is really, really an important factor in this. Uh, using, using more the words I, me, what I am trying to do for you, how I care uh, about what you needs are, and how I will resolve the problems is really a very good way to really make a customer feel like they're working with another person rather than some kind of corporate drone or some kind of automaton that just spews out automatic answers. Um, another tendency a lot of people have in that field is relying on electronic communications. They have email, just reply to the customer with the email, and that's faster and easier than doing something else. However, I often advocate to actually make a little bit of extra effort and at least to use the phone. Obviously, not a lot of times I can just get a flight to Florida to talk to a customer, but if I can spend five more minutes and make a phone call rather than send an email, that can make a really, really big difference. Because, as you might know, texting, email, any of those uh, forms of communications just don't have that kind of personal touch that allows us to transfer a tone, a state of mind, a feeling. Uh, an emotion. Well, a phone call, even if, even if it's just, that's just a voice, it can still do a lot better than just any kind of plain text with no context in it. Um, another thing that's often very common with uh, dealing with people is that sometimes to save time, we use what we call canned responses. Anybody heard that term? Canned response is typically when we have some kind of software or something that uh, stores a, signal, a certain amount of text that we can just copy and paste into responses. So if a customer asks a question, instead of actually writing it, we just kind of copy paste from somewhere else. This does save a lot of time, I can't deny that, but ultimately customers can feel it when you're just copying and pasting rather than tailoring a specific response to whatever their needs are. And that could be a big trap and uh, create even more dissatisfaction. Uh, of course, could it be even worse if the responses are super generic and, uh, or don't actually pertain um, to whatever the customer was asking. Uh, you might see this to yourselves if you ever work with companies that provide cell phone service, cable service. A lot of times you would ask a question and they would just respond with something that's so generic that it's obvious the person on the other side of the line didn't spend more than a couple of seconds just trying to get it out the door. But if we do take the time, we write something that's a little more personal, like greeting the customer on a personal level, that can make the entire difference in this kind of context. Another thing that we could keep in mind as a way to do things better is to keep the customer in the loop or in the picture. A lot of times when we work with a customer, it could take a while to resolve whatever the issue is or work at it, sometimes weeks. Um, by nature, if we uh, work with a lot of people, we would try to kind of make things work faster or uh, conserve our time, and we only provide the customer with information when we actually have it. So we could tell the customer, sir, uh, the issue is in being investigated, we might have an answer in about a week. A week doesn't, doesn't, it's not really a long time, but it could be forever for somebody who's on the, on the other side and just waiting for their item to be fixed or for a new thing to be sent over or for clarification about something. However, if we take just a few minutes every other day, every three days, to send a slight little note to the customer saying, sir, we're investigating this, but we still don't have an update. Even if we don't actually have anything uh, pertinent or relative to say or relevant, just the mere fact that we're making the communication and investing just two few minutes and sending out the communication could mean all the difference for that specific customer. Remember, it's really hard to appreciate or understand the customer's impatience or pressure or concerns uh, if we're not there. And that is all about putting yourself in the customer's shoes. Try to think, how would you feel if you were on hold for several days without knowing what's going on? Okay? Um, Kind of like the same kind of thing really, but it's also another aspect of this is letting the user feel in control, letting the customer feel that they are part of what's going on, not just receiving information, but also intact. So that could uh, present itself in the way we respond to a customer. For example, uh, sometimes we would tell, we would tell, tell a customer, uh, ma'am, this information will be, uh, I provided you with this information, um, thank you. 
things great, things honest and open, but if we just add a tiny little bit of, of text in the end saying, does that make sense? Is that okay with you? That really rarely would ever make an actual difference, but to the customer that says, you are also in control. You're not just receiving information you have in that. You can say, yes, this makes sense, or this doesn't make sense, or they would like something else. But just giving that kind of message is really what makes all the difference in this kind of context. Now beyond that, there's actually a slew of techniques that are studied professionally in that field. Uh, there's the, the many courses, articles, even books about certain these techniques. So I won't go deep into that, obviously, any each of your free to sense. For example, one of those is called reflecting. Anybody heard of it? Reflecting is a technique where a service agent, when talking to a customer, reflects back to the customer what they are receiving, what they're feeling. If the customer is frustrated, then instead of just saying yes, we would reflect those feelings in some way. For example, if the customer says, this is horrible, uh, what you've done or what you've said, we can say, oh my god, you are right, that is horrible. That way, I'm not just accepting, but also telling the customer and validating their feelings, validating that it is true what they're feeling, and that makes a huge difference. Uh, another technique is uh, we use a lot is what we call insider secrets, which is basically to give the uh, customer some kind of information that would make them feel like they're part of our life or industry or company, and that makes them feel strong. For example, I could tell a customer uh, not just information, but also uh, something about my team, my group, my company, something we're doing, something that would make them feel special. Uh, for example, let's say I'm working on, my company's working on a new product, and they could tell a customer, you know, guy, uh, you're using the software, it's great, but you should know, we're actually secretly working on this new version that's going to be out in four months. That uh, kind of information may or may not always be appropriate, obviously, depending if the product is actually secret, but the just mere fact that we're giving the customer, the customer information that's not publicly available easily could make them feel special and be a part of our lives and the company's uh, development process also makes for a, greater, uh, a really great big part. Um, another thing we could be used while doing is using uh, a lot of verbal assurances. Customers need to feel that they're getting the best kind of service, and acknowledging that in certain ways can make a great difference. So verbal assurances is basically telling the customer um, and assuring them that they're getting the best there is. So that could be a personal assurance, like telling the customer your, uh, how, your level of experience and knowledge. For example, sir, just be aware that I am the best guy trained for this. I have this certification, I have that uh, experience, I have that knowledge, making them know that you're not just some random guy who is the next one on the phone, but actually the guy who's an expert in this, this topic. Another variation of that is assuring the customer that you're dedicated. So instead of just saying, yes, we're working on it, uh, assure them, sir, I, am, I understand the, the importance of this matter, and I can promise you. I'm fully dedicated to work on your problem. I'm going to work on it every day until we get it solved. So that kind of assurance makes a big difference. Uh, another variation of this is just uh, explaining and assuring the customer that you have an understanding of what's going on. So if the customer provided some information, some technical stuff, you can demonstrate and assure verbally that you've actually understood this rather than just uh, some random um, acknowledgement. So, that could be repeating what the customer said to clarify that you've actually understood that or giving some kind of context as to why it is that you have a good understanding of the situation. For example, uh, well, that's an interesting situation, sir or ma'am. Uh, we've actually seen this exact, exact kind of thing several times this week, so I know exactly what you mean, and that's why we have the kind of, the kind of background we need in context to really uh, address this and figure it out. Um, another technique that's uh, sometimes practiced by some companies is what we call a warm handoff. Warm handoff is uh, the process where we have to transfer a customer from one person to the other. You might have seen this yourself. If you're calling your cell provider, for example, they could go uh, say something along the lines of, oh, um, you have this problem, I'm sorry, that's not my department, that would be in uh, technical support, that would be in uh, customer preservation, and then they just kind of sell it, uh, give you another number and hang up or say, we'll transfer you uh, some click, and then four minutes later, you're just disconnected. That is extremely frustrating, and I'm sure it happened to a lot of you as well. Uh, so the techniques to really avoid and prevent that is what we call a warm handoff. Uh, some companies, for example, T-Mobile, anybody work with T-Mobile? They are very, very adept at doing a warm handoff, and that's why their service is really good. That situation is where you basically say, um, this is another department, but instead of hanging up or transferring the call, which is risky, 
uh, the agent will make the call for the customer to the other group or department, have both parties on the line at the same time as they explain what's going on, and only then transfer the actual call. That will both give the new agent, the new department, a chance to get the information clearly from a knowledgeable source, somebody in the company, and also avoid the potential frustration of the customer having to redial back in, wait again to get the service, and have to explain the whole situation back from the start. So that is a very, very important key factor there. Um, then there are certain things that a lot of people do who are actually not so great. A lot of times we, as, uh, as people who service a lot of people, kind of rely on tried and true things that seem to make things easier. I mentioned the can response, but another type of uh, repetitive kind of behavior is using of the word sorry. So the customer says something and you reply with, oh sir, I'm so sorry to hear that, let's whatever do to deal with it. So sorry is a great word, obviously, right? We've all been told, you know, if you do something wrong, apologize, sure. But if you reuse and overuse it too much, you kind of sound, begin sounding like a robot, and that's the last thing a customer wants. The customer wants to feel connection, not just somebody who quote over text over again and again. Same kind of uh, uh, thing goes to the word I understand, which is another thing that customer agents oftentimes kind of repeat from a prepared template or read from paper. Uh, oh, sir, I'm sorry. Oh, sir, I understand that uh, there's a problem. Just repeating the same kind of thing over and over is one of those things that customers really, really get upset about and uh, tend to interpret the behavior as robotic, automatic, and sometimes even offensive. So all these techniques together combined, if you really take the effort to spend some, some time really trying to understand what the customer is coming from, where is this, uh, uh, is this coming from? If the customer is upset, maybe there's been a good reason for that. It could have been the actual issue, but it also could have been somebody else he spoke to or something else that really triggered some kind of anger. So really spending a few more minutes trying to read the situation, trying to understand what the customer is, where he's coming from, what their job function is, what their status in life is, they're maybe a high-ranking executive, feels they need to be treated differently, maybe somebody who just went through some personal stuff that makes them feel more vulnerable, more angry, could be a divorce, could be fired from a job, could be stiffed at the bank, anything really could happen. But really spending just a few minutes trying to understand that can make a huge, huge difference. That's it for me today. Thank you very much for attending, and I hope you enjoyed it.